Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzon. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Voigt. <laughs> John Voigt? <laughs> my name is John Voigt. And my daughter is so hot. Oh, she's so ridiculous. Dude. My name is John Fahey. Joining me as ever is the prettiest boy under the sun. Three kids in a trench coat, but all of them are shredded and have huge cocks. Michelangelo's <laughs> David Duchovny. Aaron Joseph Peta. Thank you so much. Apparently, I'm also the Terminator guy from Stranger Things Season 3. <laughs> That's what Joe said. Oh, now, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now I see it. Yeah. But also, that's pretty fucking cool. It is. Yeah, Honestly, man. I don't see it, but I'll take it. It's pretty cool. We were just talking about uh, Dark Days? I think Terminator? It, Dark Fate. Dark Fate. Dark Fate. Yeah. Uh, the upcoming, uh, apparently, James Cameron sanctioned sequel. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, he's heavily producing. Yes, he's like heavily involved as a as the EP, I guess. And it's uh, got um, who who are they bringing back? They're Linda Hamilton. Linda Hamilton. Uh, that's and right. They yeah. announced that they're Schwarzenegger's bringing, in it. Old, Schwarzenegger's in it. Yeah. Explained old again. I don't know how that works, but uh, sure. He's a Terminator. Well, I think it's the guy the Terminator's it, based on. Yeah, that's is, is the gimmick. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, I can't believe they made this robot out of my perfect physique. <laughs> Everyone knows gown. that the Terminator is based off Aaron Peter, host of Profiles and Eccentricity, <laughs> with his wide shoulders and body that looks like a sock full of walnuts, yeah. a condom full of walnuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but they're it's... bringing back uh, Edward Furlong. Mm. But. But. Uh, I think I already have a better idea than what I heard the story is, so uh, we'll just talk about it on a Patreon. Okay, I like the sound of that. Just, Aaron explains it all, my better version of Terminator. Ooh, that sounds fun. That's good, yeah. You should do it for Never Seen It, too, here on the Starburns Network. Oh, I will do it for Never Seen It here on the Starburns Network. Yeah, because Network. it doesn't exist. You can't see it. That's exactly right. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think we should say Aaron Explains It All comes from the Patreon that we do here. You can yes. subscribe. Yes, yes. Uh, five dollars a month gets you another show a week from us fucking idiots. Mm -hmm. And um, you've done two Terminators on there already. I have done two Terminators on there already. And the next one will probably be Endgame. Avengers Endgame. Yeah. yeah, which will probably be uh, by you know by extension every Marvel movie All right from Phase One through Three. Yeah. Um, and uh, just to just to complete. The the intro here, there is a man hmm. to my right, your left. My left. Oh, right. I'm, yeah, that's right. Is the T69000 of my heart. Oh, hi. Uh, Flip me a, over. A, 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 a liquid metal, mm -hmm. but instead of silver, it's white because it's white hot cum. Yeah. Hey, all right. Precious white ice cream. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sweet, precious white ice cream. <laughs> Stark reality. Matt Brousseau. Oh, thank you. Wow. Thank you. That's the good best. looking son of a bitch. That's right. the best intro I've ever had. Uh, I, I, I do you think uh, we should also say look at the Instagram. Uh, we, uh, you get, you're gonna want to look at these psychos. These guys, yep. these people look crazy. <laughs> yes. And there's a lot of um, dumbass other shit we throw in there too. Yeah. Um, Follow us on the Instagram. Hey, yeah. try that out, huh? Some of our, some of our. Did you see the Eritanos put up the 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 Mike Tyson Spider Man thing today? Yeah, I did. That was so fucking Spider -Man. dope, Spider Man. <laughs> Joe, you have a fuck with radioactive spider. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you have a fuck with great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> you ever experienced loss and learned lessons from that motherfucker? Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck you know, Joe, you dumb bitch? <laughs> you know, I've learned a lot from you, Joe, in this yeah. three-hour podcast, but I just want to say, man, what the fuck do you know yeah. about great power, great responsibility? I watched Cuff die in my arms <laughs> when I could have saved him, <laughs> but I'm too busy being a professional boxer. <laughs> I was nah. fucking around the ring just like Spider-Man, man. Now I don these yep. tights. <laughs> <laughs> now I don these kings and these tights. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. I got you. <sighs> mm. That's good. Man. Yeah, that's tasty. That's very tasty. That's tasty right. pill. Scrumptious. Yeah. Mm. And I love Mike Tyson. I was just telling Matt before you walked in. You talking about the dream? 
I was no, I was just saying I'd rather have Mike Tyson as president than Donald Trump. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, whatever. Four people that hate Donald Trump that listen are gonna shoot <laughs> him. <and fuck laughs> him. Mike Tyson is qualified. Yeah. Yeah. He's taking a beating. Better He's vocabulary. Yep. Yeah. Brain works better. Yes. Oh, see, you Mike Tyson for president in two thousand. Chris Rock show. I think it's you know. Here's where Mike Tyson stands <laughs> stands on drugs. Here's where Bush stands. Here's where Gore stands. Yeah. Here's Mike Tyson on drugs. Doctors got me on this Zoloft shit. <laughs> That's, what I don't That's kill. to keep me from killing y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson for president. Yeah. It's so good, man. Mike Tyson for president. Uh, let's, uh, let's, what else do we want to say? We also want to, uh, just a uh, shout out to everybody that sends us shit. We always yes. love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's really sweet. It really makes us laugh like all day long. So please keep doing it. Yeah. We uh, got some stuff on the Patreon, uh, <laughs> last week when John was telling the story about his dad, pissing, the, yeah. uh, pissing, um, on the carpet. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> <laughs> After uh, we're know. not gonna name who said it. No, no, no. But we but had do a few we ha- fans send in a couple of drunk dad stories. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm would love to see if you got drunk dad, drunk family member stories. If they involve urine or any sort of bodily excretion, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this this comment was maybe the most insane one we ever got. Uh, from 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 that episode, which uh, it was. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. It's from two episodes ago, right? Yeah, it's um, this is the comment again, not mentioning any names, but if it you is. want us to tell us, and we will. Yeah, my dad took a drunk sleep shit in the electric fireplace in my bedroom. Dot dot dot. At least I hope he was drunk <laughs> and sleepwalking. My dad took a drunk sleep shit in the electric fireplace in my bedroom. <laughs> that is nuts. <laughs> Dude, I've never even heard you of gotta a sleep shit. You gotta get a new bedroom. You, gotta, you, <laughs> no, no. you could close that place down. How? Yeah. What is? What? That is insanity. A sleep shit. A I really like it. A sleep. You can't. Can you? I mean, I don't think I've. Done Unless it. it's like a shark. <laughs> you gotta a, be facing one way to get it in that oh, fireplace. Fuck. I just love the identification of things when you're drunk too. You're looking for a toilet and you find a fireplace and you're like, "That's it." There it is. Yes. Or, <laughs> you know? or a trash can. <laughs> yeah. Thank God I got one of these heated toilets. <laughs> <laughs> they can feel so from. good. There's shit all over the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> like he, but he's like standing up, like he's in the bathroom and he's like still three <laughs> feet above yeah, the toilet. Yeah. What? Uh, the bad thing about these heated toilets <laughs> is that you got to squat over them. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to operate. And they're in my kid's bed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, what yeah, uh, would you want, will you give us the the rundown on what we learned last time about Eric Jan Hannesson? Well, part well, three, starting today, Aaron Pita, part three, first time, third period profile. Well deserved as well. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, 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 this is a three parter. Yeah, and it's got everything. It's got it all, baby. It's got it all. Um, Last time we talked about him fucking around in World War One, being a fuck up, uh, mm-hmm. purposeful fuck up in World War One, being on dead body detail, taking uh-huh. the names, taking you know, coming up with names, making up new names, um, starting to really uh, come into his own as a clairvoyant, solving crimes, psychic detective, and, and, and work, a performer, and and as a performer, a masterful performer, selling out shows in Vienna and moving into Berlin mm-hmm. and going to make money doing seances for rich people in Czechoslovakia, all around Eastern Europe. Uh, and then he gets involved um, with one who will eventually probably be a profile one, Count Wolf Heinrich von Heldorf. Heldorf. Mm-hmm. Uh, maniac. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nazi, of course. Of course. Of course, Nazi. Uh, libertine. Mm. You know, just into the nasty hot sex shit. Into black magic. Mm. Uh, total asshole who would later go on to be murdered for his role in the attempted assassination of no. one no. Adolf Hitler. No way. He was a part of Operation Valkyrie. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's fucking nuts, dude. It's nuts. So he gets involved. The wolf goes against the master. <laughs> Execution. Yeah, man. And Hitler made him like watch him kill everybody. Else. It was like, Whoa. Yeah, yeah, he was mad betrayed. That's some King Jong. Rune shit. Exactly. Yeah. Meat hooks. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm on meat Fuck hooks. Fuck me, dude. Um, <laughs> really quick. Uh, so 
just to lighten it up after the <laughs> yeah after the Texas Chainsaw Massacre just <laughs> <laughs> came through here yeah. in a world. Um, Who smells the meat hooks? <laughs> just You're trying to get off, but you can't. <laughs> Dance puppet. <laughs> <laughs> meat hook. <laughs> meat hook. <laughs> um, just a couple of funny little quick things that uh, little things that Hanneson would do. Tidbits. Um, in one performance, uh, uh, Hanneson um, stand behind him, stood behind a man and rubbed his temples and put him into a hypnotic trance and said you are five years old it's christmas and you just received a ball as a gift play with the ball and oh the man and like a child the man started like playing with the ball it's christmas it's christmas playing with the ball uh and then he said watch out watch out the christmas tree uh, and uh the man like ima- hypnotized imagined that he knocked over the christmas tree and started crying <laughs> <laughs> and then eric said now your father scolds you and he locks you in your bedroom uh and you have to go to the toilet, but the door is locked. What are you going to do? No. You shit, you shit in the fireplace. Do you see the vase on the table? No. And so the man started to pull out his cock and piss in a vase in front of everybody. Oh. And then uh, right <laughs> as he was pulling his Jeez. cock out, Eric snapped him out of the trance. So he had, his, he had his dick in his hand. Waking up out of a trance. Yeah, it's a hell of a trance. No ball, no Christmas tree, just dick in your hand. Yeah, just a grown it. man fucking a vase. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, hey, it's a Saturday for you. <laughs> Dude, what a, I don't... I don't do this. But I could. Uh, hey. It actually it fits. He um he also hypnotized uh this <laughs> this kind of this Berlin socialite woman into uh basically like a sexual frenzy. And then she was like, she snapped out of it. And she was like, oh, that was great. Like he hypnotized her, <laughs> he hypnotized her into like humping a fucking like pillar. At the at the theater. Good God! And uh, and then at, like released. at a private party, she was like, "Hey, now hypnotize him!" And so she hypn- he hypnotizes a dude to start like ravishing her at the party, <sighs> and she was all about it. These yeah. fucking German broads or something else. <laughs> Um, now make him <laughs> now make him rape me. Now make him your your mental puppet. Ha <laughs> slave. Make him your mental puppet. Oh, you love me. Oh, you can't get enough um, of me. It's not your choice. You know, he was making a lot of money. He he had his tabloid magazine. He he was becoming uh, famous at this point. Yeah. And then, you know, he was obviously, you know, toast of the town. In terms of being a, a stage performer, that's so insane. He it's like you hypnotize me and you do some black ass magic, and you're like, "What else do you do? Well, I also have a magazine. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, I have a day job you as know a writer. Mean? Yeah, it's 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 quite a celebrity status. It is, but I mean, it, it really was a precursor to modern celebrity culture, where every everybody's got like four fucking things they right. do. Sure, yeah, totally. Like uh, Jeremy Renner has an app. Yeah. Exactly. So it's Thor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You want my body? Oh, he says it like in his Kiwi accent or whatever, but like, <laughs> you know, everyone's got their other thing and, yeah. and it feeds into that kind of like cult of personality culture, right? Like everybody now does have their own little tribe and he right. he had a, tons of people uh, buying his magazine. He had a, um, he had a sex cream. Uh, I mean, don't we all? Yeah, <laughs> no. He had a, a cream that he would sell uh, through through his magazines, and I think I don't know if you rubbed it on your cock or something. Mm. <laughs> Why would you rub it? <laughs> Her cock? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, butt clip. Yeah, he rubbed it on the butt clip. That's exactly right. <laughs> he was making money. He was a millionaire. Uh, he had a Bugatti. He had Bugattis, seven apartments, uh, and a yacht. He called the yacht of the seven sins. Uh, <laughs> oh. He threw lavish yeah. feasts with mescaline and peyote, naked women and boys, oh. uh, and like, uh, would often hypnotize women into sexual frenzy and sustain prolonged sexual orgasm. Oh my god! Which is a bullshit because women can't orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> um. So at this point, like the Nazis had suffered like multiple election losses over this time period, right? Yeah. This is still like before, you know. <laughs> uh, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, the whole. You know that. Yeah. Forgettable. <laughs> clear, uh, evidently forgettable period in history. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. We, I mean, there's so much. There's so many parallels in this. As I'm reading it, I'm like, oh shit, people. Uh, the Nazi party was broke. The Nazi party was broke and in debt at this point. They've lost a lot of elections. They're spending a lot of money on pamphlets and rallies, and you know they lost again. Um, Heldorf, Count von H- Wolf. Heinrich Wolf von Heldorf mm-hmm. uh, himself was three hundred thousand uh, invested in debt. Wow, gambling debts. Oh, 
Yeah, he was bad with money. He was a mess, dude. Really? Yeah, yeah. He would welch out on his family and stuff, too. <laughs> yeah, he was really bad. Heldorf <laughs> was a fucking maniac. Um, Heldorf paid half of... I'm sorry. Hannesen paid half of Heldorf's debts two days after the party on the yacht where they beat the shit out of that Indian boy mm-hmm. sexually. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Just a couple episodes. Just last episode? Yeah. He paid off half of his debts and even lent Heldorf his Bugatti to drive around town to pay the debts off. Because uh, I think his car got repoed or something. Whoa. Um, so he's like, make yourself look rich and yeah. pay yeah, off your debts. Yeah, exactly. And he lent a lot of people money. Um, he uh, Other SA officers would then come to Hannesen for money. Uh, Wilhelm von Ost, who embezzled 30000 from the Nazi lottery fund, borrowed off just enough to stave off the people's punishment. Wow. Um, so the money he stole. <laughs> um, other uh, SA chieftain Ernst Rome. And who was also a rival to Heldorf hmm. uh, within like the Nazi you know, party, um, would wait outside Hannesen's private hairdresser every morning for his daily allowance, basically. Whoa. Yeah. Private hair? Every every day you got a haircut? Yeah, dude. I mean, you life. got sex cream, but not everybody's got like pomade right, and like yeah, a, a yeah. mirror. And when you're super rich, like you. I guess you do fall people, into routines. Yeah, like you that, fall yeah. into routines and uh, you depend on people way too much. Yeah, you know? I've been eating yogurt every day. You know? Whoa, I don't too rich brag. for my blood. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Wow, man, that's that's crazy. Um, the yogurt? No, the, 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 the haircuts is. is that, you know, like, hair, you know, hairdress. I mean, also, you know, yeah, you're the showman. Right, right, right. Just, you know, when you, if you're on set, if you're right. an actor, you, you go to hair, mm-hmm. hair and makeup every day. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Hannesen even bought 400 pair of military boots for the SA Street Fighters. Damn. Yeah. The, what, the brown coats? Yeah. Yeah, they're all brown. Brown shirts. Brown, brown shirts. shirts. Um, Why was he so into funding the Nazis as a Jewish person? <sighs> I mean, it's about ingratiating yourself. I mean, to like the halls of power. Yeah, I think, he, you know, he maybe did see some writing on the wall. I mean, do you think so, he fancied himself a Rasputin kind of... Yeah, I think he believed his own bullshit. Yeah. I think... Um, Sometimes the safest place to hide is in plain sight. Sure. He's always been an opportunist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the best opportunity. Yeah. And plus he's and when making people, bank from them. He's making tons of money. And when people owe you money, mm-hmm. you got them. Mm-hmm. And he would also, I mean, he was like this Epstein character, right? Like people owe you money or he also was videotaping a lot of these parties. Oh, yeah. Or filming, right? Yeah. Like he would, fi- I just re- I was reading more today and he was <laughs> filming all all these like orgies and shit and on the boat and really? in his apartments uh <laughs> as basically you know leverage he's like look at this shit watch watch he's fucking a face he's fucking a fucking face he's, he's peeing in the face <laughs> he's fucking pissed. he's peeing in the face he's fucking her face <laughs> yeah he's he's, <laughs> he's, all put, over the he's place. put these people in trances mm. and then, then a masculine walking, and peyote. walking them in front of the camera to then well, fuck also then, i mean i think if i'm giving him the benefit of the doubt which maybe i shouldn't because he might be a total fucking Traitor you and, can do and, both. and yeah, but um, let's say for the sake of argument, he wasn't being a, a total coward. Um, because I mean, if you're giving boots to the brown shirts and they're just like straight up going around beating up Jewish people, you're a scumbag. But if he also was thinking, I kind of want to surf this wave of power, that's kind of interesting, especially because he's been he's seen you know the house of cards fall many times, yeah, and he's been there and made it fall sometimes. Right. And he's kind of been a part of it. So maybe it's kind of like one of those things where you're like, I'm better off to be in the middle of the mix than not. Right. You know, he, at this point, like, of course, anti-Semitism was around, but it, like, it wasn't Nazi doctrine at that point. Right. And the Nazis were still seen as somewhat fringe and, you know, they were losing all the time. It was like the communists were more of a threat. Right, and mm-hmm. so it wasn't like he was totally directly funding crimes against his people yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but it would like it, once it did start happening, you'll you'll kind of see yeah. as, I, as I get onto it. Um, he even, man, I forgot. Like he even lent money to Goring. Really? Yeah, yeah. Herman Goring, he owed, owed money to to Hannesen for something. Um, thought he was Danish. Yeah. They all thought he was Danish. Um, at a specialty seance, Hannesen predicted great success for the Nazi Reich for several years, and then, with a caveat, followed by utter and total destruction. And that evening was the evening that Goring like, cut off all contact with him. 
for the rest of his life. He's really? like, I don't like this shit. I don't like it at all. I like it when you said we had like great success <laughs> coming uh-huh. through. Yeah. Like, that are in total. It's bullshit. I'm out of here. Never paid him back. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm never, and you're never getting your money either. Yeah, say good things. Um, but Heldorf was still all about Hanuson. He still like was like hooked. Um, he supplied Hanuson with 25 SA bodyguards and a, and a chauffeur. A chauffeur. Mm-hmm. Um, he was confused about all the Jewish people that Hanuson hung out with. <laughs> He was like, what's with, <laughs> what's with all the Jews, Eric? <laughs> uh, and Eric was like, oh, you know, um, I don't really see, you know, they're, they're, and he was, he always proclaimed to be neutral about everything. Yeah. Like, whether, Very Danish. Right. Yeah. Uh, and he said, you know, um, I'll do my best um, to disinvite known Jews and anti, anti-fascists. Right. Um, but, you know, he said that like. You know, some some people are so they're so crafty with hiding their um, their genealogy and their histories <laughs> yes, that yes. even a even a great psychic like myself can't get to the true bloodline of them. Uh-huh. And, and Heldorf was like, "All right, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, checks out. Yeah. Cool. Uh, can, can I have I, some money? Can, can I have some boots?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and it was in July 1932 that Heinrich von Heldorf offers to introduce Hannes to Hitler. Wow. Um, now there is debate about this. Some people think they never met, but there are like official records that said they did mm. in a few places. But you know, Nazis burned a lot of records. Sure. Um, so there are just like a, a few accounts here and there. But um, this author, Mel Gordon, uh, believes and, and uh, cites that uh, Heinrich offers to introduce him in '32. Um, and he's like, hell yeah, I'm going to meet this dude. Yeah. Uh, I predicted great things for this guy. Whether he believes it or not, you know, he's got newspapers to sell, sex cream to sell, all that shit. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to meet the guy. Maybe I can make some more money. Maybe I can get more, some more power, whatever it is. Right. Um, the date's imprecise, but it was in that summer of 1932 and they met in Berlin at his Hitler's command post at the hotel Kaiserhof. Hmm. Um, he, they had a meeting. And like right after he he called some of his homies up and was like he starts referring him to my pal Adolf. Um, he proposes a university of the occult to Hitler, really? um, and Hitler agreed that like a, such an institution might be of great value in the future uh, Führerstadt. Wow, um, man! He would speak with Hitler on the phone about the makeup of the latest headlines of his magazines. So he's like consult. He's like already getting in with the press, state news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he would claim that the Fuhrer always consulted with him before any major electoral decision. Wow. So, yeah, no parallels. None. Not a single um, Otto Strasser, ranking member of the Nazi Black Front, told the OSS, Office of Strategic Services, in 1942 that, quote, quote, <laughs> <laughs> Hitler took lessons in speakings and mass psychology from a man named Hannesen, who was also a practicing astrologer and a fortune teller. He was an extremely clever individual who taught Hitler a great deal concerning the importance of staging meetings to obtain the greatest dramatic effect, end quote. <laughs> now you gotta imagine yeah, here. You gotta imagine. You're Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Wily. Squirrely. Squirrely. <laughs> <laughs> One nut. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have a heavy guinea pig form up your anus. <laughs> <laughs> Along comes this swarthy individual telling you you got great things in your future. Yeah, he says he's Danish and looks kind of Jewish, but you don't care because he's buttering you <laughs> up. It's like everybody looks Jewish. <laughs> in your eyes. Even Goebbels looks Jewish. <laughs> because he is Jewish. <laughs> uh, let's see, in 1932, uh, this is a lot of this is not, like the rest of this is basically 1932. Um, Eric puts Hitler on the cover of his magazine. Wow. Uh, he completely changes the typeface that he's gone with for years uh, into an old gothic style lettering, mm. which Ooh. is favored by the Fuhrer. Uh, fewer <laughs> articles about members of uh, Berlin's elite. Too many Jews. Uh, more astrology, more political analysis. Um, astrological readings plotted maps of stars against the swastika and the Reichsmark. What? He parsed the fates of Hitler and Rome in, in the, uh, in the uh, magazine. Uh, All the way? Yeah. Not in that not, not in that one. <laughs> okay. Um so there is so he, he's he's getting in with Hitler, right? Um I want to tell you about the goat. Oh. So to tell you this story, I gotta tell you another story. 
<laughs> uh, I love storytelling. The old right. Inception. Story within a story. Uh, oh, we were talking about <laughs> Wait, did you Inception. Just remember it? We're talking about Inception and like <laughs> the mm-hmm. the totems, and we're like we were gonna call, we were gonna call them mementos, mm-hmm. and like <laughs> in our Inception, it'd be like it's my memento. memento. <laughs> <laughs> the totem. <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of a memento. <laughs> Looks at the camera. <laughs> just stops. smiles. Giggles. <laughs> So stupid. So 1932 was to be the uh, was the centennial of Goethe's death. So Johann von Goethe was a German philosopher, writer, poet, yes. ev- polymath, did everything. Right. Um, you know, and so in Germany at this time, there was like this burst of like pre-Christian pagan occult stuff and black magic going on in the occult in in the Republic, as evidenced by all the mystics and magicians like Hansen. Sure. Um, and so at the end of 31, a British ghost hunter and psychological researcher, Harry Price, had acquired a handwritten manuscript from the 15th century known as the Blockberg Trist, which was a fabled ritual manual for a high Germanic necromancy ritual, right? Ooh, hello. And Price believed that this was the original source manuscript from which Goethe would go on to write one of his like great epic um, poetic masterpieces. And the core of the ritual was a transformation of a white goat into a, quote, youth of unsurpassed beauty. <laughs> and it, uh, a youth? Uh, a fuckable goat. Okay. Uh, no, but it would transmute into a woman. Human, yes. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, but still, it's still a goat on the inside. Huh? <laughs> what? It would transform. It would, but it would, okay, so yeah, it, yeah. it wouldn't be like, I'm a goat in a, in a girl's body. <laughs> no, no, they it would it transform. Would, it would completely be. Yeah, it it's become, a 15th century I, I, pagan magic ritual, yeah. <laughs> what, what, like, oh, we know the rules of it's that? It's magic. All right. It's, it's not a, just painting lipstick on a goat and it, fucking it's man. A it's not a fuckable goat. Initiation. It's magic. It's magic. This is magic, people. I'm fooling you and you don't like, like it. It's magic. Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, it required uh, bat's blood, oh. soot, honey, and Ugh. scrapings from a church bell. Oh, gross. Well, the church bell, that's some good scraping. Yeah. I mean, you have you ever, s- you ever scraped unless you scraped the church bell. <laughs> it's so you know we're naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Had to be done on a full moon and with the partition participation of a virgin maiden. Ooh, oh, that's uh, always The nice. location had to be a granite altar on the highest peak in Germany. Well, there's not many of those. Wow. No, it's, there's only one. Yeah. Uh, and then you gotta get a granite altar there. You gotta get a virgin up there. I mean, uh, it's all the way. It's a no, long. No day. virgins in Germany. Uh, Israel. That's the highest peak, I tell you. Um, so the Goethe Society hears that Price gets this manuscript, and they're like, "Hey, why don't you, for the like, you know, centennial of his death, come and re- you know, perform this ritual? Right. Do some black ass magic, right? <laughs> yeah, blickety black ass. It's black ass magic. <laughs> uh, the spots magic. <laughs> uh, so, 1932 comes around. It's, it's uh, and and Price shows up with cameramen, paranormal scientists, and journalists. Um, Par- paranormal a young uh, uh, a woman <laughs> a, a woman named Erta Bone plays the part of the Virgin. Hey. Mm. People doubt her virginity. Yeah, she was hot. Oh, and she they was doubted the... that Bone bones. <laughs> <laughs> no, they doubted that she didn't. Yeah. Uh, it was a total disaster. What? Really? Uh, she had sex there? The pre- yeah, she, she ruined her virginity the <laughs> night of. <laughs> yeah, she got bell she, shavings in it. <laughs> she fucked the goat. <laughs> right there. Hasn't even transmuted yet. Uh, oh, God. Price's voice was shot while he was trying to read the Latin incantations. The moon never showed up out of the cloudy sky. The goat was distracted and kept wandering out of the magic circle. Good God. And none of the journalists believed that Urta was a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was recorded on film and Fantastic. released to the comedic delight of British, French, German, and American audiences around the world. No way. Yeah. It was like the first like internet video. Yeah, I was like, check these idiots out. They can't even do magic. 1932, <laughs> England. <laughs> or Germany. Highest peak in Germany. <laughs> they don't even believe she's a virgin. <laughs> Look at these foolish people. <laughs> Look at the goat. <laughs> Would you fuck that goat? <laughs> uh, Hannesson catches wind of this uh-huh. and urges everyone, to everyone, come back and watch me try it. Very. Oh, very my smart. God. And midnight, June 21st, 1932, <laughs> in a chalked off field in Tempelhof in front of a sound and camera crew and hundreds of fancy Germans, including Lenny Reifenstahl. No! Hannesson, assisted by an Aryan maiden, 
covers a goat with a white sheet, literally shouts abracadabra. <laughs> Magnesium powder ignites, blinding everybody temporarily. Very and out smart. from under the sheet pops a midget in later hose in. Very smart. Oh my god. Okay. And so people like kind of kind of analyze it. It was like it's very uh it was supposed to symbolize like transforming the republic into Hitler's state. It was like a little bit of a message. I don't know. Some people read It just sounds people, like a magic trick. Yeah, he, he was a midget in Lederhosen. Yeah. But it I mean I mean, if people like Lenny Riefenstahl were there or whatever, right, it's kind of right. like one of those things where you'd be like, you know, the artists and Hitler being an artist and that whole thing. where Full you, moon. You're like, yes. oh, man, weird. Like, yeah. is it? Does right. that mean something? Right, like Lust, room Lust. 237, like how much? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I don't even. That's, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. I mean, all of it's true is the thing. Mm-hmm. Every, <laughs> so, yeah. every, every single yeah. theory. And you know how hard that is? Shout out to NASA, the 50th anniversary of the fake moon landing. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, so he's still like on top of the world, right? Like, you know, he's doing magic tricks that people can't fucking do. He's talking to Hitler. He's, he is a millionaire. Um, he's bank. I mean, I'm not even talking about the philandering he's doing. He's like, get. He's having kids. He's fucking people. He's act, hypnotizing women and loving. I mean, I'm not even touching. Any oh of that. yeah. He is a maniac. He's doing a lot of hypno blowies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he is. That's a. And a, with fine Aryan women, <laughs> and that the the, yeah. the Nazis don't like that. Oh, they don't like they the, don't like it one bit. It's weird that that <laughs> that great power comes with no None. responsibility. None. Maybe that's why you need Mike Tyson in the yeah. White House. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so he's just getting these. He's he's hypnotizing girls. He's like, you yeah, suck on my dick. You love it, you moron. And you you love idiot. it. When you wake up, you're still gonna love it, even though you totally have your own free will, sorta. <laughs> and you still, guess what? Guess what? You're not gonna remember this. Guess what? You're not gonna remember anything. I'm, I'm, I'm chosen as a motherfucker. <laughs> you saw no foreskin. <laughs> you saw no foreskin. You're not gonna say nothing to nobody. And you still love Sakamaka. And you love swallowing too. And you, you're hey, disgusting. Hey, right. You sicko. You, you, sick, you pig. Boo, sick fuck. You used to be a goat. You know uh, that? You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. Now wake up. What are you doing sucking my cock for? Hey! Hey! Isn't that your I'm sus- definitely Danish. <laughs> <laughs> that all sounded like your Sopranos script, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> you bitch. Uh. Uh, um, you don't know nothing. <laughs> secretly, Eric was a mess. <laughs> no. You mean, you mean behind, <laughs> you mean behind this sm- smattering of, of insane things he was striking out at the world blindly at? I have a magazine, and I embrace Hitler, and I do black magic, and everything is normal and fine. But at home, things were a mess. <laughs> this is where the behind the music you know, <laughs> plays the tone. Turns out. Um, hmm. he, he consulted with a fellow, like, mentalist performer guy, uh, Frederick Marion, <laughs> and he, like, he was like, I'm certain Hitler's coming to power in 33, and he says, quote, I've gone too far, I know that now, nothing I can do will alter, alter things. Oh, God. I've made plans to leave for America next year, but they'll never be realized. There's no way out for me. Holy fucking shit! Yeah. Um... Like, and so the press, like, so communists don't like him um, because he represents, you know, religious, magical thinking. Right. And, and he's talking to Hitler. Right, of course. Nazis don't like him because a lot of them are suspecting that he's Jewish already. Yeah. And that he's ingratiating himself with the Fuhrer when he has no, quote unquote, no right to be, right? Right. So he's kind of getting it from both sides. Members of the press are starting to, like, dig into his history and talk shit about him. Accusing him of being Jewish, um, or suggesting that he might be. In fact, the, the joke you said about being circumcised. One, some person made a joke about like it was a woman at a show who said something about him being circumcised, mm-hmm. and that he should, you know, some bullshit like that. I don't remember what the deal. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. He's Jewish. No, he would her. Hannesen's paper uh, had just foretold of a Nazi bloodbath in Hamburg just days before a massacre actually happened. Then he predicted the banning of the Communist Party, a Hitler victory in the Reichstag, and a world catastrophe in the year 1940. Wow. 
communist papers, another one outs him that, you know, Hitler's private Rasputin, the Wizard of the Ages, is a Jew wow. born Herman Steinschneider. No! Like, yeah, they, they tracked it down. They, found, they tracked that down. In August, he probably had the same table in his house. Probably... <laughs> it smells like his dad. <laughs> uh, August, he leaves Germany. Uh, his yacht docks in Copenhagen. Uh, so he does go to Denmark. It's just, yeah, uh, that's a sweet sentence. <laughs> Danish tax authorities limited uh, hit, limit his activities to public gatherings where the police like just eyeball them. They're just like, we don't like anything German. We don't like you. Yeah, you're. You're weird. Yeah. Uh, you're weird. You're so sick. <laughs> n- none of the no private seances, no private consultations. Anything you want to do, you do it in public, and we have cops on with eyes oh, yeah. on you. Um, you know, he did interviews with uh, Danish newspapers where he just bragged about his successes. And did he had, still claim to be Danish? Uh, I don't. I mean, I yeah. I mean, huh. I don't. It's just ancestry wise, you can claim to be anything. Sure, of course. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah, a, no, not a citizen, certainly. Right, right. But from back when, yeah, yeah. of course. That makes Danish, a lot more sense. Grew up in Austria or some shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you We're know, part he, of Denmark. He <laughs> talked about his five million strong Hanusen society, mm. which is like his, you know, fan club, basically. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the newspaper asked, you know, will your followers do they say uh, Heil Hanusen? And he said, not yet. <laughs> Wow. Uh, so he even joked about that. Um, it, people suspected it was also kind of like he was trying to get some of his money out. He had millions in like dollars and Reich marks and Frank. Like he had just tons right, of money. Copenhagen and, stashed it away in a bank. Yes. Mm. Um, so then, you know, the communists and the Nazis are still battling for power. Nazis lose another election, most of their money. Hitler's like holed up in a hotel threatening to kill himself. At this point, it, it, things are not looking good for them. Because he lost an election? Yes. A tough guy, what do you say? Wow. Um, more tabloids out him as a Jew. And uh, Heldorf catches wind of it. You know, because not everybody's reading tablet. Tabloids are tabloids. Mm-hmm. But yeah. people eventually have enough. You know, people have been saying shit about Epstein for years and years and years. And eventually, like, people start paying attention. Yeah, right? it's one of those things. Well, it's easy to start a conspiracy that the government has, uh, is in, it has like, pedophiles among it when... There are pedophiles everywhere. Pedophile, yeah. There yeah. are pedophiles yeah. in everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not, just not, taking not the an, Cosby allegation seriously. Not on this yeah. podcast, though. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Heldorf catches one of this and he's like, what the fuck? When we had an orgy, like, <laughs> we're broke. We <laughs> <laughs> were Jewish this whole time? Yeah. Didn't, he, didn't he see his dick? Yeah. <laughs> he sucked it. My my di- well, the thing is, my dick's so big, it outgrew my foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> he's really tucking it back tonight. He didn't see nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Heldorf, like, comes up to him and he's like, what's well, the Jewish thing? And he invents another, like, fake... You know, genealogy about why he could speak Yiddish and, and had Jewish friends. And he was like, oh, well, you know, I, I grew up in this town around Jews and stuff. And that's why I have this, you know. Really? And, and, and Heldorf was like, okay, all right, cool, cool, cool. cool. Anyways, farm? can I have some more money? <laughs> yeah, I know. A, you want to go fuck these uh, <laughs> yeah. Indian children and whip the shit out of them? <laughs> you go... um, so, like I said, lots of records were purged, but there was one another account from 33 where Hitler and Hanusen meet again at the Kaiser uh, Hof Hotel. No way. Yeah. So this is 33. So yeah. This is like getting down deep to, in like, the game. Deep in the game. And apparently, like, Hitler was, like, really apprehensive about this meeting and nervous outside. Remember, he just lost an election. He's on the verge of suicide, and he's consulting the psychic again, right? Um, so he has his aides wait outside because if it's bad news, he just doesn't want—he wants to pretend like it never he's happened. He's going to jump out the window. Holy shit. Yeah. So, Hanneson goes into the room, he drags a chair into the middle of the room, puts Hitler in it, and then starts, like, going over his his skull, like, doing phrenology shit. Uh. And, like, looking over the bumps in his skull and stuff. And he's after, uh, <laughs> consults some astrological charts, and then he goes into a trance and, like, freezes up. And then after a long silence, he says, I see victory for you. It cannot be stopped. And Hitler jumps to his feet, grabs Hanneson by the shoulders, which shakes Hanneson out of his trance just in time for him to be greeted by Hitler as P.G. Hanneson, which means party comrade Hanneson and a man who was bound to succeed in life. So, like, he gets, like, super ingratiated with the Fuhrer in that moment because he gave him the news that he wanted to get. Goebbels catch wind of this. He's pissed. Uh, and Why? he's been secretly amassing a file on Jewish on his Jewish heritage. Really? So he's, like, fucking just... He's got a, you know, 
a briefcase full of papers showing that Hanna's his Jew. Huh. I thought Goebbels was also just the even more conspicuous Jewish person in, in, in the, the leadership. Because they say they always say it's like a thing about Hitler, or it's mm-hmm. like you know he's just you know partially, at least partially they say. Yeah. But the thing with Goebbels, it was even more traceable. Right. And I think it became one of those things where it was like you know gay Republicans, where you're like, I yeah, fucking. Well, yeah, same thing with um, fucking the guy that started the FBI. Yeah. Yeah. Like, of course he. Of course. Get, get a file on everybody else, yeah. so nobody has a like a file on you. Yeah. Or, you know. There you go. What yeah. was his name? Uh, Jagger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So January 30th, um, Hindenburg hands the reins of power to Hitler. He makes him um, Reich Chancellor. Yeah. With like a caveat that, you know, the Weimar Constitution will stay in place and you will become. And, and so people think that this is going to actually, you know, do damage to the Nazi party because they won't have any actual power. Yeah. So he becomes Reich's chancellor, although they call him like the Reich, the chancellor in handcuffs at this point because he doesn't really have any true power. Um, but still, nevertheless, Hanessen's prediction from 1932 had come true. He predicted in 1932 that he will be made Reich's chancellor, and he does. Um, seeing the like the writing on the wall and the 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 burgeoning anti-Semitism, a lot of the wealthy Jews leave Germany at this point. Yeah. Uh, not Eric. <laughs> uh, doubles down on Berlin. Uh, he is now, uh, you know, he taps into his considerable wealth. He leaps, He leases a dilapidated mansion and commissions its reconstruction into a palace of the occult. Uh, this pagan temple had everything. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, gold leaf covered walls, neon lighting, secret recording devices hidden in every column. Oh my God. That makes sense. Babylonian and its Egyptian inscriptions on the walls, tiny wooden Indian prayer benches for the attending, basically, slaves. Uh, wow. The centermost chamber of the palace had the Hall of Silence. <laughs> uh, he installed a hidden hydraulic lift to hoist himself 15 feet into the air for trances. A gigantic bronze sculpture of Hannes and dressed as Caesar with statues of the Oracle of Delphi to the right and Greek sorceress Sybil. On the left. Oh my God! He had an inner room called the Room of Glass. Was for um, private readings. Uh, I think I have a excerpt here of when it opened. It, it took a few months to build. I mean, he rushed the building of it. Yeah. But he sp- yeah. Spared no expense. Um, I mean, he's probably just got like a fuckload of money, right? He has, like, he's he just... m- millions, millions, and he has Nazi protection. Yeah. Um. God, let's see here. What's the opening of this thing? Yeah, I guess he's. He, why leave when you? This is your chance to build your ultimate uh, fuck yeah. sanctuary. But also, he kind of foresaw that he wouldn't be able to leave. I guess, but it sounds like he could have just. He took a yacht to Copenhagen. But why are you gonna leave? Yeah. Why what, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? And, and is, why is you leave? Know. You just got, like, yeah. knighted by the guy who... Uh, I mean, unless you know. The rising star. Unless you know it's going to end in disaster, which... Maybe he, he doesn't. Maybe he's full of shit. It might be. But might also, be. maybe he's probably kind of, like, self-destructive, and he's like, you know what? I, maybe I deserve whatever shit happens I think maybe. it's kind of um, you, the one of those things where you think, uh, I got away with a lot, a lot of reasons I shouldn't be alive, a whole bunch of reasons I shouldn't be alive. Mm-hmm. And then you go out surfing the biggest wave. Yep. I think that's kind of... I made it here. What the fuck? Yeah. I'll fall on the bomb. That's crazy. As the bomb falls. I'll lay on the bomb as it falls. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So before I get to the opening, um, you know, during this time, you know, he's... he's addre- He dresses charges that he's, you know... Jewish. He he's being charged with all sorts of shit. The the nationalists think he's a communist. The communists think he's Jewish and and shady, and so he's just like. But he's still favorable with Hitler. Yes, and that's really all that matters. He's a magic man. Yes. Um. So he um. Puts a full page statement out. And says that um. I'm neither a Nazi or a communist, neither an anti-Semite or a philo-Semite. I respect every honest, on- honest political tendency, ridicule no religion and no nation. I am equally indifferent to the Jews as they are to me. Um, 
and then he kind of like just goes full Nazi in this. He goes, I've pledged to be first with everything I own and am to sacrifice at the altar of the German lands for Germany if necessary. And if the time comes, I know that Adolf Hitler has already sacrificed everything for the national ideal. I've seen SA men in torn shoes and thin jackets standing in the icy winds for hours in order to perform their duty. I have observed altruism, integrity, and true patriotism among the millions who stand behind Hitler and Hugenberg. Therefore, I have no choice but to show my respect, my gratitude, unhesitatingly, in spite of every obstacle, to serve the truth. It would not matter if I hailed from Honolulu or Krakenwinkel, if my great uncle was the Wonder Rabbi Prosnitz or the Archbishop of Cologne. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he brings up the Wonder Rabbi? Yeah. And, and I think that's because the communist papers were digging that stuff up, and they outed that. So right. I think he was addressing it directly. Right. If not, it's a baller move. Yeah, but get you know at least get ahead of it. Yes. Wow. Um, That's crazy. Then he was baptized. He was baptized as Catholic and inducted into the SA fully. Did they put a foreskin on him? No, he was given an SA okay. uniform oh, okay. uh, and a Nazi pendant, and it was uh, the pendant was ceremonially affixed to his Cadillac. <laughs> As no you do. Way. And then he got his Nazi card. He was a literal card carrying member of the Nazi party. Wow. Um crazy. Yeah, crazy. Uh he spent a lot of February out of public sight, presumably working on his palace of Temple of the Occult. Yeah. So then um before right before that. No, 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 okay. He opens the Palace of the Occult. Sunday, February twenty sixth. Okay. Tons of people are there. Names you wouldn't get, but tons of names. The names. The names of the day. Yeah. Yes. The names of the day. <sighs> Man. Okay. <laughs> Upon their entrance to the palace, Hanneson's male guests were given white rubber slippers to place over their shoes, and the temple priestesses enjoined them to absolute silence. In the foyer and the hall of silence, red candles flickered, an organist played Mendelssohn, switched over to Bach. And as Nazi searchlights flooded the room, the funeral march from Beethoven's Eroica dramatically resounded. Servants entered with trays of fine champagne. Hidden wall lights illuminated the place in darkened tones of grayish purple. Then exactly at 10 o'clock, clouds of greenish fog from an arched passageway swirled into the main hall. Quote, Hanneson was not in sight. Then concealed somewhere in the room, an organ began playing the thunderous music of Wagner. The lights dimmed and went out, leaving only a brilliant spotlight slashing down on the center of the floor. Slowly, the floor moved, and a chasm appearing in it. Two panels moved back, and a throne rose majestically to tower 15 feet in the air. On an ebony black throne was Hanneson, clothed in a scarlet robe. He was holding a large crystal with the colored lights flickering through it, and there was a half day's expression on his face. Oh my God. Hanneson began to speak, his rich voice seeming to come from the walls. For the first 30 minutes, he devoted himself to general predictions. I wasn't too interested and didn't follow him too closely. <laughs> right. <laughs> but a majority of the things I remember came true. He predicted the blood purge that was to come later in the war with England, Russia, and America. Neon lights and Jesus, dude, smoking. it sounds fucking amazing. It sounds yeah. super dope, dude. All yeah. you need is some like Darude Sandstorm, yeah. and you're fucking tripping. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. light show, yeah, yeah. That's that's sounds incredible. Amazing. He, he puts out a special issue of the magazine for the Reichstag election to happen on March 5th, uh, with the title of uh, Death Horoscope of the New Reichstag. Hinted at communist subterfuge and subsequent Nazi retaliation, followed by the death of the German Reichstag. So, uh, very shortly thereafter, the Reichstag goes up in flames. Yep. And uh, a Dutchman named Van der Lubbe. Mm -hmm. is, and he has he has no history of pyromaniac shit. <laughs> 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 yeah. it, it, but you know there are people this author floats a theory that Hanneson might have hypnotized him uh, and there was the, a the guy that set it on fire yeah that's fucking interesting yeah man. because in a moment in that's fucking a, interesting there's a moment where he actually is in where he's for most of like his indictment and like you know arrest and everything he's like in the days right he's like fucking Sirhan Sirhan and then when Heldorf shows up and Heldorf like looks at him and he like stands to attention and it's it's almost like he comes out of a hypnotic 
trance. No that, way. Um, yeah. He sees Heldorf and that brings him out? Yeah. You will see Heldorf. Weird. Yeah. You will um, snap out of it. Really? Yeah. I mean, really? I don't know. It's what the book <laughs> says, but... <laughs> What's more plausible? I mean, you're, uh, so you're like you're like in a trance, you're setting fires, and you see Heldorf, and you go, Fuck. Oh, oh, wait, fuck. I'm pissing in the face? Heldorf's like, yeah, what's up, dude? The path word is... <laughs> <laughs> you are not gray squirrel? <laughs> uh, like I said, Goring and Goebbels hated him and were jealous of him, of yeah. Hanuson, that he was so ingratiated with the Fuhrer. And- God, they were all such... Fucking little high school girls, weren't yes. they? They're maniacs. They're all on. They're all on speed or yeah, something yeah, too. Yeah. They just Goebbels is like, oh, he loves <laughs> Harrison so much. Why is it mine? Oh. My locker and heart. I ended up in the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm the one that called it the Eagle's Nest. Uh, March 20th, Heldorf, who had previously been appointed High Police Commissioner, was dismissed from his post. Uh, it was none other than Hermann Goring that called and informed him that you're now going to be the police commissioner of Potsdam, where one of your prime <laughs> functions will be breeding horses. <laughs> wow. Uh, hey, those horses got to fuck, man. An old acquaintance of Hanneson's from back in the day uh, warned Eric that two mysterious men, possibly Gestapo agents, uh, had questioned him on Eric's daily comings and goings. And so like, this is kind of where... Nobody really knows exactly why, but like this is the end for Hanneson. And like, um, it may be that Goring and Goebbels were like kind of just like internal squabblings of the Nazi party came down on Hanneson in this moment. One, the like the really like stamp seal of approval of anti Semitism and people wanting to get on Hitler's side, and just the politics of all the underlings trying to like ingratiate themselves. For the viewer, um, debts, you know, people were in debt to Hanneson. Um, so, like I said, uh, the Gestapo agents com- questioned one of Eric's friends on Eric's daily's com- daily comings and goings. Um, on March 24th, 1933, a squad of men show up to his apartment, place him under arrest. He thought it was a joke. He thought it was a practical joke. He's like, dude, I'm, I'm like, here's my, here's my card. Here's yeah. my Nazi card. Yeah. By the way, you owe me money. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, uh, nice boots. I'm best friends with Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Like, my pal Adolf. I didn't throw that around. Not yeah. exactly a lightweight here. <laughs> uh, not talking about Eichmann. <laughs> I'm talking about Hitler. <laughs> Is there's one Adolf I call my friend, <laughs> and it's not Eichmann. <laughs> it's fucking Eichmann. Hell. Eichmann sounds Jewish, by the way. Uh, uh, I, yeah, 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 maybe you should yeah, look into his paperwork. Look into that. I have a prediction. Uh, he's Jewish. <laughs> Um, they demanded that he produce all the receipts of the debts owed to him by SA men. So they shake him down for all his IOUs, right? Um, he's taken to Gestapo headquarters, first charged with working with communists, then charged with submitting false Aryan paperwork for purposes of joining the Nazi party. Then he's released. And then he writes a letter in invisible ink. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what would you then... do? <laughs> what would I? What would I do? You know how you make invisible ink, right? Yeah, yeah. Piss. Yeah, yeah you piss all uh, over. Check it. out a pisser of the world. He probably had some like other shit, but he probably had a whole bottle stored away. <laughs> yeah, from a goat. Uh, he penned the letter. It was written to this chick. He was fucking. <laughs> um, well, again, what would you do? <laughs> yeah, he's like, I know you're hypnotized right now. <laughs> hey there, bitch. <laughs> hey there. You must be pretty scared. <laughs> Me too. Uh, but you don't know what the fuck's going on right now. But I hypnotize you anyway. You can read piss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> try, try not to eat this blue letter before you're done with it, <laughs> freak, sicko. I bet, I, bet, I bet my plea for help smells pretty good right now, doesn't it? Anyway. I'm really scared, actually. <laughs> I'm, I had no problem producing the urine. <laughs> this, this I swear to God, if I get out of this, I'll let you go. <laughs> I'm not gonna read this letter. It smells like piss. Yeah, it tastes too good. <laughs> I'm gonna it says, eat it. Quote: I have no time for long explanations. <laughs> let's be. Fr- oh wow. Um, let's be friends again at the end. I wasn't as shrewd as I thought, nor as stupid as you believed, but stupid enough. Yesterday they beat me till I was half dead, but half isn't enough for them. I know that without going into a trance, you no. don't. You don't believe in clairvoyance, but the great. Hitler does. I fixed up some notes for him that'll make him dizzy. That Rumberg God spelled my finish. 
I always thought the business about the Jews was just an election trick of theirs. I always thought that I always thought that business about the Jews was an election trick of theirs. It wasn't. Read carefully what my colleague Daniel has to say on the subject in chapters eleven and twelve. <laughs> Count the days, <laughs> but only after they have destroyed a hundred temples in a single day. That's the time to start counting. The first date you will get a mark. The first date you will get will mark, mark the fall of the man who wants to become the rule of the world by brute force. And the second date will mark the day on which will occur the triumphal entry of the victors. This is my farewell to you. And he left this seemingly blank note for this woman. Holy shit. That's... And he wrote it and she took it to his her, his, his other friend, Eric. That's immense. That's... Yeah. I mean, that line, I always thought that business about the Jews was just an electron trick of theirs. <sighs> yeah, that's what you um, tell yourself. Nope. That's nope. brutal, but it, dude. it is until it isn't. You can't, you can't give it to the that's opportunity. That's really good shit. Yeah. Uh, and then the days of what? Days of Daniel? So. The, count the days. Jesus. Yeah. On the 25th of March, three SA men break into his apartment. They drag him to Gestapo barracks. Waiting there was Rudolf Steinle, Kurt Egger, and SA Fuhrer Ost. Each held a pistol. He was executed in three shots. Two hit him in the head. He was robbed of everything except 30 marks and bills. His corpse was discovered April 7th by lumberjacks. The palace was looted, left in shambles. Wow. And uh, that was the end of Eric Jan Hanneson. Damn. And it was likely ordered by Heldorf. Really? Yeah. Why? The debts, possibly, but like why Why kill the goose with the golden egg? Well, they probably... But he also hated Jews. He really hated Jews. Maybe he felt and he got swindled by one. Or maybe, you know, mm. Goering. I mean, Go, if, they Go, all, if they all knew it too and you'd be like, who's going to be the one that tells Hitler he's 100% falling for Jewish stuff? Yeah, and, do you want to be that and guy? Then, and then do you want to, yeah, do you want to not be the one that extinguishes, you know, the threat, if it's a threat? And, you know, I, I think it's probably, I think it's more... I think it's just very likely it's underling politics, don't you? Well, well, so they um, they send a von Heldorf to it. They they demote him basically, and that to a degree, yeah. And you know that's a signal that something's going on. So maybe there's some sort of you're demoted or we kill you mm -hmm. unless you give us something. Yeah. And okay, thank you. Yeah. Now you're demoted. We yeah. won't kill you. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he had a great he had a pretty solid career in Nazidom after that until he tried to kill Hitler. Um yeah. so yeah, I don't know, but he So there are there's a uh, kind of a list of some of his um predictions and the record on. Okay. In the tenth year of his rule, Hitler will be betrayed by his most intimate co workers, correct. Um in 19, uh, August 1942, British troops will march through Denmark. Not true. Um, he predicted an unnatural death of Joseph Stalin in 1953. Untrue, but he did die in 1953. Mm. Uh, in 1942, the collapse of France as a great power will be complete. She'll be stripped of all her colonial possessions and be reduced to a status comparable to that of Austria after the Treaty of Versailles. Wow. Partly correct. Yeah. Right? France surrendered to Germany in June of 1940. Yeah. Uh, in 2000, paper money will be replaced with electronic accounting. <laughs> Pretty true. Japanese army will burn Manila in 1942. Confirmed. Wow. Uh, in the final Reichstag elections, the anti-communist bloc will receive a 52% plurality. It was 51.9. Uh, wars in the year 2000 will be fought with television monitors instead of artillery and airplanes. Not true, but true now. <clears throat> Basically right. true. I mean, there's uh, the I mean, book, The Gulf War Did Not Happen, which, yeah. it, which the, mm -hmm. the theory is that if you saw it on TV, so it didn't exist. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and now, I think now, in 2019, the wars are fought with television monitors. Basically, yeah. yeah. You guys are getting PTSD from fucking droning people. So there's that, the obvious literal interpretation of that but also like propaganda sure yeah that's true right that's true oh yeah right, yeah right. the republicans like i was saying to aaron the other day the republicans mm -hmm. now would rather side with the russians than the democrats right you know there is there is a thing where like no no outer enemy is is greater than the is inner. greater than the, than the inner enemy yeah because only one will take your power away uh, oh. i saw stranger things bro <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want, he didn't want these russians <laughs> uh germany's neighbors in 1940 will be england and russia 
I mean, kind of, like the the Berlin Wall kind of thing. Well, I mean, just the the extent of the German Empire during the war kind of got right butted yeah. right up in, up to him. Yeah, I mean, certainly Russia, right? Yeah. Um, the capital of the world in twenty five hundred will be Prague or San Francisco. <clears throat> hey, we don't know. Who's to say? I mean, uh, say? wow, you know. Sometime in nineteen forty two, the Eiffel Tower will be carted away for scrap iron. That, as, as far as I know, that did not happen. No, I don't think so. That would be fun. It might be an illusion. Though. I mean, what do you need iron for? Yeah. Wow, my car's made from the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> cars made of iron? <laughs> uh, invalids in the future will be killed by state agencies. <laughs> it's not completely wrong. In the late 1930s, the Third Reich established a policy of euthanasia for the physically defective. Yeah. Thank God you weren't there, John. What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what? Um, you would have yeah, stopped I'm, it. I, no, I, you would have stopped hate it. that sort of thing. <laughs> you, no, <laughs> absolutely it, not. It would have hurt your feelings a lot. You're, you're, you would not stand for it. it no, I, feel, well, I so can't much. stand up on my huge <laughs> <Yeah>. dick. <laughs> <laughs> my only physical defense is this, <laughs> this giant this anchor, dick. Anchor, <laughs> this anchor cock that I can't get off the ground. John's Wait. anchor cock is my memento. <laughs> <laughs> Am I dreaming? <laughs> oh, no. no. Ah. Stick your hands into my totem. <laughs> you can't see. But John is clicking his heels. <laughs> He's fisting his dick right now. Stick your hands into my fleshy totem. <laughs> you, your heels. Some of you may call it a memento. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh. <laughs> oh, God. Uh. <laughs> my only physical defense. <laughs> Joseph Goebbels will die in 1943. Incorrect. Poland will be occupied and divided in 1939. Confirmed. <laughs> Radioactive weapons will determine the outcome of the next war. Wow. Partially confirmed. <laughs> in 2200, New York City will be destroyed in a massive tidal wave caused by a secret geological experiment gone awry. Who's to say? Who's oh, to say? wow. That's exciting. We got a lot That's from a prediction to. he did on the radio. Uh, in uh, like 1930. What was the year he said? He said it would be 2200. Huh. He did that prediction on radio where uh, like also like one of his descendants would use like an atomic beam to save the world or some bullshit. Oh, yeah. It's a hell of a radio program. Yeah. I got to listen to that thing. Yeah. Um, and that... One of my cousins will be there. <laughs> what? That's my the older brother will be Superman. Of Eric Jan Hanneson. That's wow. very Aaron good, Sturgeon. Aaron. Wow. End of part three. Thank you. Very, very nice. It's hard to do three, huh? Dude, but, so let's get into the thing. We, what do you think? Clairvoyant? Uh, Legit clairvoyant? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm open to that idea of that being a possibility, but in just in general, right? But I haven't really ever seen like really good evidence for it. Um, I think there's some kind of good stuff there. Yeah, there's like, a, lot of, a lot of good guesses. There's a lot of very good guesses. I mean, yeah, he's educated. Very, I mean, yeah. that's one of those things, too, where you go, can I read people so well that I know exactly when they'll start fucking up? Yeah. Poland will be divided. How, how much of it is that? Like, you know, the thing of, like, how much of the con, how much of this is the clairvoyancy, how much of it is the con? Right. And how much of the con is actually highly skilled reading of people? Right. I think that's most of it. How yeah. much is Hitler telling him about I mean, what Hitler will do? You know, uh, people who are mentalists, the the real deal. Like they can feel your subconscious muscle twitches and your little facial expressions and do cold reads. It's a mm -hmm. yeah. It is a real skill. But then also on a greater scale too, where you go like, all right, you know, I know it doesn't seem like it. Everybody thinks Hillary's gonna win, but yeah. like here you go, it's gonna be fucking Trump. Yeah. Well, why? No, what? why? No, what? Why would it be? Yeah. And then like it is, and then you go. Just you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention to the, and, the, the and also, little signifiers, and and also somebody's gonna get it right. Like you yeah. know, enough people are making predictions that one person's gonna get it right. Right. You know, there's you know, in a game of worldwide, um, rock paper scissors, there yeah. will be one person who's undefeated. Yeah, and like we just like oh, Goebbels gonna die in 1943. Not correct. It's also like maybe that was just to get Goebbels off his ass. Yeah, be like you're gonna die. Tell, you're me, dying, tell me how I'll die. I'll do anything. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Exactly. You know, um, I think he was just a, you know, think about where this guy came from right. and all the skills he'd been amassing since he was a, he, he literally ran away and joined the circus. Yeah. And he's been doing that thing for, he was doing it for 40 years. 
I mean, he kept getting in over his head. And, and getting, getting out. And then he got to a point where, you know, you, you fuck up at the circus, you don't get killed. You fuck up on stage, you don't get killed. But also the main thing is, like, you you, you get into the circus, you, you get into surviving. Right. That's the first thing. Then you get into the circus, and then you, you get in over your head there, and you fucking cuck the strong man, yeah. and you still get out of that. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the military, and then you get to go AWOL from the military, and you get to perform for royalty, and you get a home with royalty. You fucking get in, up your way entrusted. Up. Yeah, and, and, and it's, you know, the, the, the currency is charisma. Mm -hmm. And the currency is charisma to such an extent that you find yourself, like, at, you know, uh, the total halls of power. And then you go like, maybe they are going to be saying Hail Hanyson. Like maybe, they, maybe, uh, maybe I'm so much better than. When have I been wrong about about being better than I am? Yeah. Better than my station. And what if that just keeps going up and up? And like, it's easy to buy your own bullshit when your own bullshit is fucking working out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and maybe that confession when he goes to his friend and he says, you know, I don't think I'm going to get up. Maybe that's one moment of weakness among. All of this illusionary shit he believes, right? But also, it's what a legacy to be like. Man, he was so right. <sighs> was so right. He was even right about his death, dude. He was. He was like, I fucked up. I can't get out. I can't escape. This Jew thing is real. It's really fucked up. You know, it's hey, pretty it, gnarly. I mean, you know, even if he wasn't Jewish, there's still a chance that. They'd be like, "Here's a here's a mystic, with power over Hitler. Yeah, who's this? Let's get rid of here's him. Here's this unknown mm -hmm. uh, foreigner. Yeah, I mean, still kind of, but with too much influence over our beloved Fura, mm -hmm. and we can't have that. Yeah, and we all owe him money. Wouldn't it be great <laughs> if he was gone? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, there, yeah, you can uh, give away too much money. Yes. Well, uh, also, you know. It's a den of wolves, and just because you're a friend with, like, the one, yeah, yeah. you know. they're still wolves. They're still wolves, and they are still all circling. One of them is named Wolf. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Adolf, you know, Adolf means wolf. You gotta, you gotta watch. Huh. Does it really? Huh. I'm pretty sure Adolf means wolf. But the other guy was actually named Wolf. <laughs> yes, Von Heldorf. Yeah, yeah. So there's Wolf, that wolf over there, yeah, yeah. Aid Wolf, yeah. and then Aid Wolf Eichmann. Aid <laughs> Wolf. You know what I mean? That's a lot of wolves. Mm -hmm. So many wolves. So they're all circling, and you're very, 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 very tempting to take down because everyone owes you money. And also, uh, you know, I mean, witchcraft was always you burn a, the little, a little scary. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's, it's it's one of the weird things about Hitler that he was like kind of like open to it and like was like into exploring it. You right. know, it's like it's not in a weird way. It's not very conservative at all. You know, no, and he, I mean, he just because he was fascist doesn't mean he was conservative, right? right. Of it's course, a, it's yes. a national socialist workers' Ooh, party, right? Of course, yes, but it is not really in, in, in step with like, you know, be Aryan, be normal, be like, but it know, was kind of tapping into the we're special, oh, yeah, and the, the spirits yes. coming out of the Schwarzfeld, mm -hmm. and yes. the reason why we're Aryan, the reason we're why mm -hmm. it's it's supremacy, it's yes. yeah, all that it was stuff. tapping into like that. You know, um, the myth, the yeah. myth, the German dream. Yeah, yeah, right. And uh, the reason why we're special is real, and it's 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 a fairy tale yes. from the woods. I mean, fairy tales mm -hmm. come from Germany. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And that's you know, it, it and it taps into the sentiment of the time that was going on in the public. You know, like willful ignorance, right? Right. Uh, he was really good at it. Yeah. He was really good at it. He probably learned it from Hanneson. Yeah. Because people, deep down, that's what you want. I mean... <sighs> easy answers. You want the easy answers. And you want to feel special. And you want to... Uh, and that's why the communists, they're just, they had to separate themselves from that. And mm -hmm. like really dialing into Marxist doctrine of logic and, you know, what's real and what yeah. can be dr put down onto paper into words and, and getting yeah. rid of that, like... Magical thinking, but and I think you know. I, told, atheism, I, right? I, I, I say it all the time on the show. But the thing about like, so the the German guy that lived in England came back, and he's like the first Hitler rally, or the first time I looked at a German newspaper, I knew we were going to war. Yeah, and he's like, and then I went to a Hitler rally, and he's like, and I wasn't falling for the bullshit because I haven't lived there in years, but I went there and everybody was, and I felt so alone. Mm -hmm. So it was like I understood why you would want to join in. You don't want to be a 
You don't want to be the fucking the one guy with the Red Sox hat at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. And so you you go like there's also like this part of your head where even politically like you have this fantasy game where you go like what if everything was met with haughty agreement? And then you say to yourself, "Man, I bet like if we were all just on the same page, like there was nothing we couldn't accomplish." Like you want to agree for the sake of just like an agreed thing that we all work for yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No you know, what it is. no matter what it is, because you go like, well, eventually we're all in this together. If we're all really, really, really in this together, well, you know, what good can't we do when it's really not that way at all? Because people no. are psychos. Well, yes. because in that moment, you're not <laughs> thinking long term. You're thinking acceptance now. Yeah, you're not yeah. thinking what does this mean? What do I? What do I have to do later? Yeah, but you're, I could see how you could fool yourself into it. You know what I mean? Like because well, it's the easiest route. It's a fucking. It's very easy, but also it's a little seductive. Well, of course, because it's know? the easiest route. Yeah, but and it's, not, some power it's not even just and... easy. It's also like celebratory. Yeah, it's like. Cheering fireworks. It's like we all like this, you know. We all like Star Wars. Like, right. you know, it's so like one of those things where you go, we can all agree yeah. that Stranger Things is good. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to be that guy. Yeah, you. Gotta um, yeah, man. Uh, just I, you know, I didn't know this was gonna be a three parter. Right. And I just kept getting into it, and as I was organizing my notes, I was just like, oh fuck, gotta talk about that. Yeah. Got to talk about that. But so much of everything about his life is about, you know, what people want to hear. So much about his life is about that and manipulating it. And, you know, yeah. I mean, it goes back to that early lesson you learned is how do you tame the lion? You got to jerk it off, off backstage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, you if know. He, had he jerked off more German officers. Well, he tried his goddamn best. Yes, sounds he, tried like, his, he took them on the yacht. They're fucking yeah, every yeah, yeah, which yeah. way but loose. They have all the money. They have all the money. Uh, you know what? It probably happened is they probably had. They could probably get their nut off anywhere at that point. They didn't yeah, need like, a we fucking. Didn't, they didn't need the mystic. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, we can just rape whoever we want. Yeah. Uh, don't take that soundbite. Nope. Uh, yeah, I mean, he even went. He went into the wolf's den and started massage Hitler into you know yeah. ingratiating him into the party by. But he also like tempered it with a little bit of doom, which people love too. Like, what's the last part of the fucking Bible? It's Revelations, and right. it talks about how you know the world's going to end. So yeah. that little bit of doom is also seductive too. It is. You know, we we have that apocalyptic mindset. Secretly, everybody wants to watch the end of the world. They do. They do. They do. It's oh, because yeah. it's narcissistic. Yes, it's all I about. Want, you. I want to be there when the world ends. Yes. Why? Because then it'll be. I'm special. I didn't miss, you're, you're I didn't miss out yeah. on it. Yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You have to see everything. Yeah, and, sure. and then there's nothing new after that. Yeah, yeah. So everything you're not missing ends out. with me. Yeah. I'm here for the end. Yeah. Did you want to hear something like that? You no, know, my dumbass blue. fucking grandma. She doesn't know about the end of the world. Idiot. She's not special. She never knows. It's just, just like so that dumb. Patreon episode, <laughs> the destroying New York. Exactly. Yeah. I thought about that when I was reading about the prophecy that uh -huh. he did about New York yeah. being destroyed by a tidal wave. So fucking cool, man. Yeah, so. Am I looking to Heldorf? Am I looking at a few of these other mystics he talked about? Mm -hmm. I mean, the book, it, Mel Gordon's uh, Eric Jan Hannesen, Hitler's Jewish Psychic. It's a fun read. Yeah. Um, I didn't a, realize, like, I never believed it would end so abruptly. It just didn't seem... Neither, neither I know, I. yeah. I didn't think so either. I thought it was going to get a lot more convoluted. No, he not a lot of time spent with Hitler. I mean, it, well, at least not documented time, because they burned a lot of shit. Mm. Yeah. You know, stuff about oh, you his can't have him hanging out with this Jewish guy. Exactly, yeah. it's not a good look. Yeah. Um, and they just murked him, dude. I mean, they got what they wanted out of him. He was in power. What do you need him for anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. You have us. Yeah. Yeah. All he's gonna do is he can't predict anything better than what he's already. Predicted. Yeah. All those SS guys were sworn like. So do you think that Hitler was kind of like, what happens is that zany mystic, that mentalist that I love so much, who tells me how great I am? And they're like, oh, we murked him. And they go, oh. why'd you do that? You idiot! Do you think they were like, well, he was Jewish, my Führer, and also gay? And, and he's like, no, he wasn't. I would have been able to tell. They're like, no, really, did he was Jewish? <laughs> oh, oh. Mm. fine. Right, I chuck this one up for Bring you. Well, some agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still cool with me ruling a thousand year Reich? <laughs> yeah. Bring in the midgets and later on. <laughs> Germany, 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 Germany. Aaron, that was a fucking was great, fine three-parter. Holy shit. I'm glad. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I, you enjoyed it. I, I hope you enjoyed it. it. And I hope you watching at home. Listening. Listening at home. And watching at in home. In your car. On your toilet. Jerking off. Jerking off. Jerking in. Oh, jerking so off. fucking hot. 
She's so hot. She's, She's so, so hot good. jerking off to She's my so voice right off. now. Oh, you're so sick. Oh, you sicko. Know. I'm releasing sex ASMR videos on the Patreon. Oh, wow. Okay, <laughs> yeah, cool, if you want to cool. hear me give you jerk off instructions, <laughs> yeah. call you a little Fast pig. Fast to slow wood, <laughs> nice. And then if you want to hear me in like uh, like 25% of the time, I'm just going, <laughs> Hearing the, his tap on the Gimp's head. You just want to hear that. <laughs> Guess you're going to have to wake him up. Now. 70 bucks a month. That's it. <laughs> $5 a month. Get your Patreon. I'm going to say goodnight, everybody. I love you. My name is John Fahey. My name is Aaron Hogbody. Come God, Aaron Pita. <laughs> so. Good night, everybody. We love you. Good night. Star Bands Avenue, a podcast, <clears throat> a podcast network.